you want to wrap a gift like shaped like a regular triangular prism shown how many square inches of wrapping paper do you need to completely cover the prism so if you look here we want to cover completely cover a regular triangular prism so it's, since we know that we're dealing with a regular triangular we know that a triangle a regular triangle must be the base so if we look here we outline the tri the base even though it may not look like it's the base it is the base because you name a figure by its base so if we're saying a regular triangular pr prism that means the base is a triangle so we have two base and remember prisms have two base a top base and a bottom base so our base is a triangle and what does it mean to be a regular triangle so we have 10 right here regular means to have the same side lengths so all of the side lengths are the same the same exact lengths and the same exact angles so this side is 10 this side must be 10 and this side must be 10 because they're the same length a regular triangle regular any shape means that all of the edges and all of the angles are exactly the same and since this is a triangle and triangle add up triangles add up to 180 degrees inside of the triangle all of the angles must add up to 180 since all of the angles must be exactly the same each angle is 60 degrees because 180 divided by 3 is 60 so all of the angles are 60 in this triangle and all of the lengths are 60 because that's what regular means. Now we're ready to find the surface area, the area of the surfaces. How much cover do we need to put on the outside? How much paper do we need to put on the outside of this figure? So I have my base, which is a triangle, and I'm going to use the formula for a triangle. So this is my base. So I'm going to use uh, area equals one half times the base times the height. And this is going to be, this is, once I substitute and evaluate, I'm going to get the area of the base. So I'm going to substitute, so I'm going to keep one half. I'm going to use the formula, so I'm going to keep one half. And then I'm going to multiply. I'm going to put my base into the formula. And I'm going to, my base is right here, 10. And the height is where the base and height are perpendicular to each other. So it's going to be 8 and 7 tenths. So I need to multiply. Half of 10 is 5. And then I need to multiply 8 and 7 tenths by 5 to get 43 and 5 tenths inches squared or square inches. So this is going to be the area of one of my triangles or one of my base. Now I need to find the area of one of my lateral faces. Since my lateral face is the shape of a rectangle, I'm going to use the formula for a rectangle which is area equals base times height to see how many square units this figure encloses. So my base is 10 because if you look here this is the equilateral triangle so this is 10 and this is 10. So my base of my rectangle is 10 and the height is 13. Now all of my tri all of the my rectangles that's the base of my rectangle all of my rectangles have the exact same base and the exact same height. The exact same base and the exact same height because it's an equilateral triangle. Since the base is a regular triangle, I know all of the base are going to have all of the base of the rectangles are going to be the same. And they all have to have the same height as well because you have to go from the bottom base to the top base. That's the in order to be considered a lateral face. So I'm going to have 10 by 13 which is 130 inches squared for the area of one lateral face. Now I know I have three matching lateral face, so I can add another lateral face and another lateral face. And it's going to also be 10 by 13. So I know that's going to be 130 and this is going to be 130. And then I have another base. So I have my lat three lateral face, which has an area of 130. And I have another triangle with the exact same base and height as my other base, so they have the same area. And then I'm going to add up all of my face, so I have a total of 5 face. So I'm going to have 43 and 5 tenths plus 43 and 5 tenths, 43 and 5 tenths, plus 130, plus 130. So I need to add 130 
and you have to align your decimals in place. Right? So let me just fix this. You have to make sure you align your decimals in place value. So this is 43 and 5 tenths, and then I have to add 130 plus another 130 plus another 130. And you can put a zero right here as a placeholder. So if I add or multiply 130 times 3, I'm going to end up with 390. And then I'm going to add 43 and 5 tenths plus 43 and 5 tenths. Or you can do 43 and 5 tenths times 2. And I'm going to end up with 87. And then I have to add these two, which is going to be the surface area. And then I have my surface area 400. 77. So my answer to this question is 477 inches squared. And area is two dimensional because you're multiplying two lengths by each other to get an answer. So if you find the area of all of the surfaces, you will get the surface area. Now you could also use a net. So this is without using a net. You just want to try to make sure you can stay a little organized. Now I want to use a net. So the first thing you want to do is draw your base. So since this is a regular triangle or prism, we're going to draw our base, which is a triangle. And then I'm going to draw a lateral face to connect to that. So I'm going to draw my base, which is a regular triangular prism. That means all of the sides are equal. So if this is 10, all of the other ones are 10. Then I'm going to draw my, I'm going to draw a neck. Then I'm going to draw a face connected to that with a height of 13. Because the height of the rectangle is 13 or the height of the prism as well. Then I'm going to draw another triangle connected to that. That's my top base and my bottom base. And then I'm going to draw my front face and my back face. So this is one way to draw a net. There are so many different ways to draw the same figure. So now I'm ready to find my surface area, the area of the surfaces. So since this is a regular triangular prism, I know all of the height of the rectangles are 13. I also know that the base of all of the rectangles are 10. Because if the bottom of the, if the base is a regular triangular prism, that means all of the edges are 10. So if this is 10, this is 10. And if this is 10, it has to connect to this perfectly to make a rectangular prism. So that must be 10. And if this is 10, we have this side parallel to that, so this must be 10. This connects to that, that must be 10. This connects to that, that must be 10. Parallel, this must be 10. Parallel to that, that must be 10. And it must connect to that perfectly, so it must be 10 as well. Now I can find the surface area. So right here I have a rectangle. So how many square units are enclosed in this face? So if I multiply... 10 times 13, I'll end up with 130. So this rectangle right here takes up 130 square inches. And this rectangle has the exact same base and height, so it's going to take up the same amount of space, which is 130. And then this rectangle has the same base and same height, so it's going to take up the exact same amount of space as well. So right now I have 130 for all of my lateral face. Now I need to find the area of my bottom base and my top base, which are the same because they have the same height. Now the height of the triangle is 8 and 7 tenths. So the height of the triangle is 8 and 7 tenths inches. So I'm going to find the area of my triangle. And what I'm doing with triangle is I just write the formula out. Area equals 1 half times base times height. And I'm going to multiply or I'm going to bring down my 1 half and I'm going to substitute my base, which is 10. And my height, which is 8 and 7 tenths, into my formula. 1 half, 10 for base, 8 and 7 tenths for height. Half of 10 is 5. And then I need to multiply 8 and 7 tenths by that, by 5, to get 43 and 5 tenths. And that's going to be inches squared. Area is two-dimensional. So it's to the second power. Inches times inches is inches squared. So the area of one of my triangles, so the area of one of my triangles is 43 and 5 tenths. And I like to circle it just because you have all of these other numbers, which you don't have to write. 
you have all these other numbers that could throw you off. So the ones that circled is, I know, is going to be my area. So now I need to find the area of the top base, which is going to be the exact same area as my bottom base because they're both taking up the same amount of space. Now I have the area of all of my face. Now I can find the surface area, the area of all of the surfaces. So now I'm back to this point, 130 plus 130 plus 130. That's my face. Now I need to add my base, 43 and 5 tenths plus another 43 and 5 tenths. And then I end up with the exact same answer that I had before. So I can, you can do 130 times 2 if you want. Instead of doing it, or times 3, 130 times 3. Because you have 130 as a, a repeat, as an add in 3 times. So that would be 390. So all of these add up to 390. And then 43 and 5 tenths times 2, or 43 and 5 tenths times, plus 43 and 5 tenths, and you'll end up with 87. Or you can just put all of this in the calculator at once, or add it all at once. It's up to you. And we end up with the same exact answer, 477. And, and put your units on there, it's going to be square inches. So that's another way to do it using the net. Whichever one is easier, use it. Depends on which shape 